Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to apply four types of shadow or thickening effects inside of GIMP to your text. So the four different styles you see on the screen are the ones we're going to be covering in order, starting from drop shadow. So let me go ahead and start a new document, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go to File, New, and let's create this. So by default, the background color is going to use whatever you have there. Let's just change that to something we can use that would be pretty easy to see our effects on. So I'll just use a darker blue than you saw a minute ago and fill in the background with that color. So now for the text, I'm going to create it using white. So I'm going to change my foreground color to white, which is just the top left in the color selector. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now let's type in our first text. So I will just put in tutorial here and let's make this even bigger so it's very clear to see. So 500 size should do pretty good, I think. So to add drop shadow, you're going to find that in the filters menu and light and shadow and you'll actually notice drop shadow long shadow and the perspective effect are all three in this category before we actually apply the drop shadow let's duplicate this text layer so i'm going to click on the layer in the bottom right where it says tutorial and i'm going to control c control v paste it into a new layer click this new button okay so there we have our duplicate layer let's hide the original and we'll use that later so now with this text layer i want to convert its size so that it actually matches the canvas the reason for that is that on the right side over here, if we do a drop shadow that leans to the right, it may get cut off by this layer size. So we want the layer to be as big as the screen. So I'm gonna right click on this layer and I'm going to go up to layer to image size. So as we can see, it's no longer text, but the size of this layer matches our canvas. So now we'll get a better result when we go up to the drop shadow. So filters, light and shadow, and then drop shadow. So by default, your drop shadow is going to be much less visible. It's going to be kind of this soft little blur that goes around the edges. And it still has a direction. So if you have 20x, 20y, then that's going to be down and to the right. Likewise, if we do negative, let's say 20, then now you can see this is top and to the left. As, And now you can see this is top and to the left. So what I will usually do with drop shadow, because I like for it to be very, very visible, is to turn down the blur radius. So this is going to make it actually match the original shape of the text. And then I like to take the opacity and turn that way up. So if we put this at 1.0 or above opacity, then it's going to be impossible to see past the drop shadow. So it's going to basically now match the original shape of the text, just copying it and offsetting it with the position. Now, whether you blur it out is totally up to you if you want it to be a little bit more hidden. You can also make the shape behind bigger than the original by having a grow radius. So you can see this makes the drop shadow even bigger. I usually don't use that. So let me show my normal preset and all of my thumbnails. If I use my CT thumbs preset, I have down into the right of about 10 pixels. I have blur radius totally turned off, no grow radius. But I do have the opacity set to 2.0, kind of pointless, because you can't actually go above 100% opacity, really. And then the opacity set to 2.0 has a minor visual difference than if it's set to 1.0. I, I couldn't quite explain why that happens when you go above 1.0. Uh, but anyway, those are the settings I normally use. So if we hit OK, then now we have our text with our drop shadow. And note, on the right side, we didn't get cut off because our layer actually matches the canvas size. Okay, so now I'm gonna delete this layer and we will show our original text and duplicate it one more time. Control C, Control V to paste it in, hide the original, and now we're back to the square one. So the next option we're gonna show is border. So in order to do border, what you've gotta do is right click on your text layer and do alpha to selection. So this will give the initial selection and we'll create a border selection from that. So before you create your border, actually create a new layer for that board. So I'm going to click on create a new layer in the bottom right down here. And I'll just call it border. You want it to be filled with transparency and click OK. So we should still have this selection of the text outline. If you have that, then go up to the select menu and choose border. Another way that might be quicker is that you can just right click in the document and go down to the select menu. You might notice these are like the same functions that you see at the top of the screen. So we can go to select and then down to border and we choose a thickness for the border. So to make it very visible, we'll do 10 pixels this time. And the border style, you can choose between hard, smooth, and feathered. 
I will go with the smooth style and then we'll click OK. So now you'll see the selection we had before now has a inner selection and an outer selection. So it moves our previous selection inwards and outwards. And then this will be the box where we create the border. So in order to fill it, we go to the paint bucket tool, shift B on your keyboard, uh, switch your paint bucket foreground color to whatever you want to fill it with. So I'm going to hit X to swap the white with the black over here. And then you just click inside the bounds of your selection and it will fill all of the space with that text. Now you can see that this is quite thick because half of that border selection went inwards on our text. If you want to only have the outside border, simply shift your border layer below your text layer. And then that will make it so that your original text shape stays in place. So that is one of the ways of doing the border effect. I have another tutorial, which I just recently did, which actually shows a couple more ways to do that if you're interested. So I have that in the cards. So let's delete these two now and work on the next style. So that's going to be the perspective tool. So I'm going to duplicate my layer once again, control C, control V, paste it into a new layer and hide the original. And just to make sure this effect comes out cleanly, let's move this a little bit into the center and we're going to right click on the layer and do layer to image size. So we don't get cut off by the size of our layer. Let's go up to the filters menu now, light and shadow and down to the perspective effect. So the perspective effect has a lot of options you can play around with. The angle is going to be the direction which the shadow goes. Blur radius will be how much of a direct copy this will have on the shadow, or do you want it to look a little bit less clear, hence having the blur? So you could put this to zero if you want the shadow itself to be very visible. And then the relative length of the shadow. If you want this to be long, you can have it as 1.0 or above. Uh, 1.0 would be a default, but on the previous image, I had it set to 0.5. So uh, let's do 1.0 this time, and I'll just kind of hit OK. Uh, of course, color, opacity, opacity as in the transparency amount. You could have that 100 if you want it to be not transparent at all. So OK, we'll hit OK. So you can see that the shadow is quite long here compared to the one I had over here. So you can see with the 0.5 ratio of this perspective, it's about half of the length of the text itself. But if we go over here, if you account for the angle, it's about equal to the text. But honestly, I think that that's just way too dramatic. So I would probably just go back up to the perspective tool and I would cut it in half. So hit OK here. And I think that can be a little bit of a better look. Change the angle if you want the shadow to go in a different direction. So one thing that did occur to me is that you can combine this with other effects as well. So we have the perspective shadow here as a extra layer, but we can still take this text layer and create a border. So I'm going to right click here, alpha to selection, I'm going to click on new layer, hit OK, move this border layer below the text layer. And then uh, let's see, let's right click, let's do select border, uh, 10 pixels like before, and then let's fill it in shift B to use the paint bucket tool, and then left click. Now we basically have a border and we have a shadow. So if you did want to have the perspective shadow also account for the thickness of the border, then what you could do is you can merge the text with the border. So I'm going to right click on the text layer and I'm going to find merge down. So that'll combine the layers, delete the original perspective shadow, click on the combined text border. And then let's go up to filters, light and shadow perspective, or you can just click on repeat here if you want to use the same setting. So I'll do that real quick. Now you can see that this perspective is quite a bit thicker than before, so it actually matches the shape a little better. Okay, so that's enough about the perspective. So let's delete those. Let's show the original. And we're going to be doing long shadow now. So with long shadow, it's kind of like the way I typically do drop shadow. So I have switched to using long shadow usually uh, as of late. You're just taking it, giving it a direction and how many pixels you want it to come out. So the difference is with drop shadow, you can have it be blurry or you can have it have reduced opacity. But with long shadow, it's just going to be thick and in one clear direction, no blurriness. So let's go back over to the tutorial tab and I'm going to go up to filters. Before you do that, though, just in case, uh, let's do right click on the layer and then layer to image size. And now let's go up to the filter menu, light and shadow, long shadow. So we can see here there's no option for blurriness or decreased opacity. So this is when you just want a really thick shadow going in one direction, kind of making your text more 3D. And it is an effect I really like. So uh, the length is going to be how far you want it to pop out. 
generally I'll put it somewhere around there, 20 to 30, depending on what your original text size and, and what canvas resolution you're working with. The angle is going to be the direction. So anywhere in 360, you can have it point to the left, up to the bottom right. And I generally think if it's kind of going in two directions at once, that's going to look a little better than if you're just going straight down like this, but totally up to you. And you can change your color here. Uh, generally, I would make that black, but you can make it whatever color you want. So if you want some kind of cool stylistic effect like that, you get, maybe have a red long shadow, then you can click OK there. And that's basically long shadow in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward. Now, uh, note when you're using these effects, if you want to use settings that you recently used, you can just go up to presets and then you can click on your last used and you can see the other settings you were using in uh, previous instances. So that is a pretty cool, quick way to resume your old settings. And if you do have a preset you really like, then you can just select it, um, have all the settings correct, and then you click on this little plus button to save it as a named preset. So that way it'll always show up in this menu. Call this red long shadow. And then now we have it down here. So that's pretty cool. Now you can just select this anytime you're in GIMP for any of your GIMP documents. So that is basically in a nutshell how you use these four effects, drop shadow, border, perspective, and long shadow to give thickness to your text. And as you've seen, it is also possible to combine them if you want. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching to the end. I have been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.